So, looking at the title, you probably already know what all of these words mean. Electric charge, electromotive force, relationship. But you've probably never seen them together, which is the reason you've never, probably never seen them together is that it's a new equation that I just made up. So I want you guys to check it and see if there's any flaws and if they do and, and if you do see any flaws, tell me down in the comments, I guess. And um, in my last video, I explained my first version of my um, equation, but now I've updated it a little more. And now it's about a cylindrical loop. So you have a cylindrical loop. It's a cylinder, but instead of having like this, but it's 3D, not 2D. No, I can't draw that. It's too hard. So it's like that. And it has a radius L. And it has a radius, and here's, right here is a circle. It has this radius L, little L. Uh, like that and um, it also has an electric charge inside of it which is Q it also has an electromotive force C like script capital E but I like to call it C so let's see electromotive force and um but we don't we know all of the values of the we knew the the radius and the charge but we don't know the electromotive force now i made an equation um only instead of um depending on a lot of things i only made it dependent on this all and q so how do i how do i write this thing i started with the divergence theorem that gauss made which was the electric field is equal to the electric charge density over epsilon naught. And then um, I tried to rewrite D as the new on the numerator. So I knew D is equal to Q over V, like inside of this, the volume. So first I, re, uh, I rewrote volume. So volume was equal to a cylinder is two pi Oh, H. But, oh, no mind, sorry guys, that's the surface theory. V equals pi R squared H. But since, um, but since, uh, we, we had a cylindrical loop, not a cylinder, this would be equal to pi R squared L, where L is the length of the cylindrical loop. So L is just equal to 2 pi R, so pi R squared times 2 pi r is equal to 2 pi squared of q, right? Well, no, that's actually not true because um, when we're talking about pi r squared, we're talking about this little r right there. But when we're talking about um, 2 pi r, <coughs> we're talking about the whole circumference, so we're talking about this r right here. So it's actually pi r squared times 2 pi big O, which is equal to 2 pi squared O squared O, like that. So D is equal to Q, or you call it V, but I like to call it D, over 2 pi squared O squared O. So then we rewrite Q, and since we know that the this the electric flux is equal to q over epsilon naught we knew the electric flux times epsilon naught is equal to q but we can change epsilon naught because we know the i mean we can change the electric flux flux because we know that the surface integral of the surface of e dot d a is equal to the electric flux so but 
that's just the electric field going through the surface of uh, the electric field going through the surface of the cylindrical loop. But that's equal to the electromotive force according to Faraday's law, which states that the electromotive force is equal to the time variant of the uh, magnetic field and the time variant of the electromotive field is the electromotive force, so that means the line is equal to V dot TA is equal to the electro DL is equal to the electromotive force, but that's only for one D contour, so we're talking about two we're talking about two D surfaces. So it would be two D surface intervals. So this is equal to um, the electromotive force. That means the electromotive force times epsilon naught is equal to Q. So D is equal to the elect electromotive force times epsilon naught over two pi squared r squared o. That's what we do now. So uh, to get now we've we've we went in Q a D. So now we put it back into this. We plug it into into this equation, and this crosses out or cancels out with this, and we get E is equal to the electromotive force of two pi squared r squared r. Now according and then we can multiply by two pi squared r squared r on both sides. You get that's fun to say two pi squared r. 2 pi squared r squared r equals the electromotive force. We could just leave it there, but actually, we from Coulomb's law, we know that the electric field is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. And then times q. But then we multiply and we get that. So we get times 2 pi squared o squared o. And we get these cancel out. This cancels out with the exponent on pi. 4 cancels out with 2, but instead of going to 1, it just goes to 2. Um, and then, yeah, that's how it works. So that leaves you... 1 over epsilon naught times q pi r. But hold on. Um, pi, so we know c is equal to 2 pi r, right? That means that c over 2 is equal to pi r. That means we can replace um, pi r with c over 2. So 1 over epsilon naught times q c over 2 would be equal to, oh, I'm sorry, 1 over 2 epsilon naught, what am I thinking? It would be equal to QC over 4 epsilon naught, where C is the circumference. So that's our final equation. The electromotive force is equal to the electric charge times the circumference of the, electric, the, of the cylindrical loop over 2, 4, sorry, Epsilon not, and that is called the electric charge electro motive force relationship. There you go. All done. Yep, yeah, all done. Can you say something about? Quarantine or COVID nineteen. So stay 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 safe from the coronavirus. I think it's coming down a little bit now, but still you gotta be safe and keep social distancing, especially if you're one of the elderly. So that's it. Yeah. Okay.